Okay, so I've already drawn out um, kind of like the nuclei of the thalamus just to save time because there are quite a few groups. Now, we said that the internal medullary lamina, which was made up of white matter, divided the gray matter mass of the thalamus into an anterior kind of compartment, a medial compartment, and a lateral compartment. But what's important to realize is that the nuclei aren't the main groups aren't actually um, as simple as that. So I'm going to start off very simply by introducing to you the intralaminar group of nuclei. So the intralaminar group of nuclei, there's only one nucleus that you really need to be aware of here, and that's called cortico-median nucleus. I'm sorry, centromedian nucleus. And the way you remember the name is that if it's located within the intramedullary lamina, like quite that that's going to be literally inside the center and the middle of the thalamus so that's why i remember the name central median nucleus and the way to remember its function is also pretty simple if you just enlarge the letters c and r in central now it activates the cerebral cerebral cortex via the reticular formation Okay, that's it. That's all you need to know for the central median nucleus. Let's go on to our biggest group of nuclei, which is our ventral group. Now, our ventral group can be divided into ventral anterior, VA, ventral lateral, VL, and then ventral posterior, which has been further divided into VPM, ventral posterior medial, and VPL, so ventral posterior lateral. Now, each of them has slightly different inputs and outputs but a way to simplify it is say that VA and VL so VAL the VA and the VL ones are for motor function their functionality is motor that means you already know what they're going to project to on the cerebral cortex they're going to project to the pre-central gyrus which is our um, motor cortex they're going to project to the pre-central gyrus now for the ventral anterior VA. For VA I want you to remember that if, if you recall my video on extra pyramidal system and extra pyramidal tracks and our closed loop systems, a lot of them or almost all of them were projecting to the ventralis anterior nucleus with the first three striatopalgary, subthalamic and substantia nigra projected to the ventralis anterior. So you're going to get information largely from extra pyramidal components and those information is going to be quite simply your so input is going to be from the globus pallidus and the substantia nigra the globus pallidus and the substantia nigra because you remember it went to the striatum and then it went to the globus pallidus it never went straight from striatum to here so you just remember globus pallidus and substantia nigra and your output is going to be to the prefrontal, pre-central cortex because that's the motor cortex, and your function is going to be motor. And yeah, just remember that. Um, I was just looking at what the last thing was said that it says, and it says the extra pyramidal loops are involved here. Fine, fair enough. VL ventralis lateralis uh, ventral lateral group. Now remember in the cerebellum video I made about the extra pyramidal um, tracks, which actually go to the cerebellum. If I remind you of what the mnemonic was, it was CPCD, and it went from the cerebellum via the cere it went from the cerebral cortex via the pontine nuclei to the cerebellar cortex from there it went to the dentate nucleus which could project to either two things it could either project to the red nucleus or to the thalamus nucleus ventralis naturalis vl that, that big boy is right here vl that's the nucleus and the way i remember it is the cerebellum has l's in it so it's going to go to the vl so your input here is going to be from the cerebellum and red nucleus. This is going to make a lot more sense if you know about the cerebellum pathway from them. And this one, once again, because it's motor, is going to go to the pre-central gyrus, which is your primary motor cortex. And then from there, um, yeah, that's it. And then this can be in your cortico-cerebellar tracts as well. 
on a cerebellar cortical tract. Now we have the fun ones, VPN and VPL. These are slightly fun because you can kind of guess what they are. Now we remember that the trigeminal and meniscus always ended in VPM. And trigeminal has a big M in the middle and so does VPM. Okay, not in the middle, but VPM has M. Other way to remember that is we're putting makeup we put makeup on our face okay and putting makeup on our face means we get trigeminal nerve sensation we get sensation we get general sensation from the head from the head and we also get taste sensation which is our gustatory pathway so the two inputs are going to be via the trigeminal lumineuscus as well as our gustatory lumineuscus and because these are now we're talking about vpm and vpl and these are the last two were sensory those two are motor these two are sensory because they're sensory they're going to go to our post central gyrus which is our somatosensory cortex all right going to vpl vpl where have you seen this before in the medial lumineuscus video okay remember fasciculus gracilis fasciculus cuneatus nucleus gracilis nucleus cuneatus internal arcuate fibers decussating going up as the medial lumineuscus going to our vpl yep that's right here but here instead of saying medial lumineuscus, lumineuscus i'm just i've we've just said spinal lumineuscus because it also includes the spinothalamic tract kind of and your this is also going to go because it's another sensation it's general sensation from the limbs and the trunk l l for limbs and this is going to go to your post central gyrus once again because that's your somatosensory cortex great now those are our main groups now we have the dorsal group and luckily for the dorsal group you just need to know the names and what they're involved with so the dorsal group ldl the person who's always at the back has ldl i don't know ld stands for lateral dorsal then you have lateral posterior then you have pulvinar remember because this is ld and this is going to be L, lateral posterior then you're going to get another one beginning with p which is pulvinar that's associated with sensory function that's kind of like all you need to know about it really now moving on to our fourth group which is over here now the way i remember the order and the way because i know sometimes it helps to learn the order of these we go from intralamina we go ventral dorsal medial all the ones ending in L basically and your medial group of nucleus just contains your dorsomedial nucleus some people also include ventromedial but for the sake of this keeping this short i'm going to stick to dorsomedial nucleus as our main nucleus here dorsomedial nucleus is going to receive it so this is so basically you know how this one was involved with just general sensation from here onwards we're going to start to involve the limbic system slowly so the way i remember this is medial group um, basically, um, it's going to, first let me tell you what we do, where the inputs are coming from. The inputs are coming from the hypothalamus, the amygdaloid body, and the lateral group of nuclei. And because this is also to do with sensation first, it's going to project to the post-central gyrus once again. Now, this is to do with sensation, but it also starts to involve the limbic system. So the way I remember this is HAL, H-A-L, HAL, gets DMs for dorsal medial gets DMs, which make him, first he senses the DM and then he feels like upset. And that's the general sensation as well as the limbic system coming in. Okay, weird acronyms aside, now we're going on to the median group. The median group, it just has, basically the median group nuclei are just called that median group nuclei. And these, I want you to know the input for this. And now the input for this is basically um, because this is the median group, these are located most medially in the entire thalamus. The medial group is actually lateral to the median group, if that makes sense. Now the inputs are going to be from nucleus raphae, locus cerebellus, cerebral cortex, and spinal cord. So if your car breaks down in the middle of the road, most medial, you're going to call RACC. RAC? RCC. Now, this one is involved with the limbic system. Another pattern to note in the order that I've set these out is that at first we just had general sensation. And then slowly we evolve the limbic system. 
Then we know the limbic system even more. This one is just with the limbic system. There's no sensation in this one, only limbic system. And finally, our sixth one, before we go on to the seventh one, our sixth one is literally a component of the limbic system. How it's part, so our sixth one is our anterior, I don't know if you can see it, our sixth one is our anterior group of nuclei, and that's literally a component of the limbic system because it's in the papa's circuit. Do you remember? The mammillary, bo mammillary bodies, or the mammillary nuclei, which are medial and lateral, they project to the thalamus, and they project to the anterior nucleus of the thalamus, via the mammillothalamic tract and then from the thalamus they project back to the cingulate gyrus via the internal capsule. Let's just say that for this one. And finally the posterior group of nucleus just includes posterior pulvinar and if you look at the pulvinar it basically has if you look at a proper diagram of it, not the one I've drawn, you can see like little expansions or bulges, and those bulges are your medial and lateral geniculate nuclei. So our posterior or pulvinar thalamine nucleus is involved in basically a special sensation including visual and auditory. Um, I've talked about metathalamus there. Okay, I'll talk about it in the next one.